slowly he rose. The crowd fell silent. Those at the back leaned forward, straining to hear. The atmosphere was electric. He spoke, and his carefully chosen words flew like swift arrows and found their mark. The great man, a spokesman for the Most High, was warning and condemning. The crowd became restless, shifting positions, clenching fists and murmuring. Some agreed with the message, nodding their heads and weeping softly. But most were angry and began to shout back insults and threats. Such was the life of a prophet. The quote office of a prophet was instituted during the days of Samuel, the last of the judges. Prophets stood with the priests as the Most High's special representatives. The prophet's role was to speak for the Most High, confronting the people and their leaders with the Most High's commands and promises. Because of this confrontational stance and the continuing tendency of people to disobey the Most High, true prophets, true prophets, true prophets usually were not very popular. But though their message often went unheeded, they faithfully and forcefully proclaimed the truth. The book of Isaiah is the first of the writings of the prophets in the Bible. And Isaiah, the author, is generally considered to be the greatest prophet. He was probably reared in an aristocratic home and was married to a prophetess. A prophetess is a wife of a prophet. The wife of a prophet, that's all a prophetess is. In the beginning of his ministry, he was well liked. But like most prophets, he soon became unpopular because his messages were so difficult to hear. The same is true today. The true children of Israel will not listen to the law of God, nor the prophets that he sent to give them warning. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Hamashek Yahushah, Bahashem Rahakadesh.
Uh, do you have a question? You, you just want to make a comment? Uh, well, those are the two things that right now I'm entertaining because I'm out here to teach. You don't, this is, you don't come out, be, let's, be, let's get this straight. Uh, uh, I'm out here teaching. You can't interrupt the teaching, okay? So, no, I'm not gonna, I'm, I, I, I asked you, wait, wait. I, you, you, I asked you a question, that is, do you have a question? I don't want to hear a comment. I don't want to hear a comment. I'm here to teach. Okay, okay, so what, okay, tell me briefly what it is. Okay, you want to introduce yourself. Okay, okay, go ahead. What is your name? My name is Dr. Patrick Brown. Doctor, okay. Okay, and you know you're not supposed to teach? Did you know that? Uh, Women are not supposed to teach? Sir. Did you know that? Sir. Did God change? Does God change? Sir. God does not change, right? Sir. Does God change, yes or no? I came to Does God, I get you, and I have to correct you. You told me you're a pastor. You're not a pastor. You're a pastor in, you're a pastor in the European society, but you're not a pastor. I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing. I'm teach, I am teaching you. I'm teaching you. I'm te yes, I can. Titus 2. 1 Corinthians 11. That's what you need to go to. No, Nothing's changed. No, you can't no, teach. No, so you can, doctor, no, you can go. No, I'm just not even call anybody a doctor. My Messiah said, going, oh, you're going to go. You're going to go. You're going to go. You got to get out of here. Going, you're not going to disturb. Going, going, Do you want the wrath of God to come upon you? Do you want the wrath of God to come upon you? Okay? Because you're messing with the, the prophets. You're messing with the prophets. See, this is what this is what the, the black woman wants to do. She wants to argue. She wants to lead the man. No. That is not going to happen. Those days are over no. for the no. true Israelites. No. Now, now you're, you're done. You can go up the street. What's your name, sir? Albert Cornell. I'm uh, with her. Are you with her? Okay. So, what is your relationship to her? Oh, she's your pastor. Okay. All right. Well, both of y'all can go on up the block because nobody is listening to you all. You understand? Nobody's listening to y'all. This is good. This is a teaching moment. You're about to learn something. You're about to learn something. Here you go. This is a, you, you are not telling me anything. See, you said you came to introduce yourself. Now you want to introduce me. You want to, you want to tell me something. You have nothing to tell me. You have nothing to tell me. You need to just go on. Okay, Titus 2. That's what we're going to do. We're going to read Titus to you and show you that there are no such thing as a woman teacher. No such thing. No such thing. No, no you don't know what you're talking about. You just want, see, this is your problem. See, you want, you want to even listen to a man. You want to even listen to a man. Uh, this is your pastor, okay? That's your pastor. You, well, you know what? You're being misled. I'm going to tell you that right now. You're being misled. Oh, yeah, you are. Oh, yeah, you are. There's no women preachers in the Bible. No women preachers in the Bible. No women preachers in the Bible. No in the Bible. Doesn't exist. You can't find one. You cannot find one. Name one. Name one female prophet. You know, there are none. There are none. There are none. You don't even know what a prophet is. You have no clue. You you ain't, you not rebuke you can't rebuke the word of God you can't I read from the word of God you can't rebuke nobody you Jesus Jesus is not the Savior's name you don't even know you have no clue doctor doctor you don't have no idea it ain't Hamasia by the way either it ain't Hamasia by the way it ain't no Hamasia you don't know what you're talking about you don't know what you're talking about you are you are going to go into the lake that burned with fire that's what's gonna happen. You go go into the lake that burned with fire. That's what's gonna happen. You a liar. Yeah, I'm reading the word of God, but I'm a liar. You you a minister and I'm a liar. You you a minister and I'm a liar. Get out of here. Go on out of here. Go on out of here. This is what this is what this is what it is. This is you. Second Thessalonians, two and ten. This is you. This is you right here. It says, <laughs> and this is it right here. The wicked is being revealed right here. Remember not, this is 2 Thessalonians 2 and 5. Remember ye not, that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. You see, I'm not emotional. I can talk. She's emotional. And now ye know that now, are you speaking over the word of God now? Are you speaking over the word of God? Okay. May the, may the most high God punish you with your blonde hair on your head, trying to be a European.
you are sick, sad, deceived. And this is what is happening to you. This is what's happening to you right here. This is what's happening to you. Right here. But we are bound to give thanks always to the Most High for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because the Most High have given, the Most High have from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. That's what he says, okay? That's what he says. You are deceived. You are deceived totally. It's a shame. It is pathetic. You try to you try to disturb the word of God. That's what you try to do. Coming over here, disturbing the word of God. This is a typical black woman right here. This is why they're going to go in the lake that burns with fire. This is why they're going to receive total damnation. Because they cannot control themselves. They cannot control themselves. <laughs> Sad, sick, I tell you. You do not want to mess with the Lord. You do not want to mess with the Lord God. You can forget it. She has no idea what's going on. Neither does the gentleman that just walked up. But it's good he distracted her because she needs to get the hell out of here. Before the Lord God punished her right here in front. Right here on this camera. All right? Right here. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. You, you, can't, you can't rebuke the word of God. You, can, you need to rebuke yourself. You need to rebuke yourself. You need to rebuke yourself. All right, man. Woo, here we go. I was on it right there. Here we go. Because she is part of the wicked. She's part of Esau, the European system, who's allowed her to be a, a minister. Deceive. She's Jezebel.
suffer and hurt for now. We have to suffer with this foolishness for now, but when Yahushua, how much that comes back, it is over. Here we go. Let me finish reading that because I was headed to it. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. He talking about, talking about a man, which is Esau, the white man today, the wicked, for the mystery of iniquity or sin doth already work. Only he that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. See, this guy, this man is pretending to be God. This white man wants to be God. That's what he wants to do. But he is not God. He wants to sit in the place of God, sitting over the congregation of God. That's what he wants to do. And he says this ridiculous black woman over here to do the very same. This is what he does. So let's finish it. <clears throat> Verse 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. See, her working is after the working of Satan because Satan, the, the accuser of the brother, has given her authority to have a church and a congregation and to claim a title of a doctor. When our king and savior said, do not call anyone doctor. All right, what, let's go on. And, what, and doing the workings of Satan with all power and signs of lying wonders, all them lying wonders coming out of that mouth. All those lying wonders coming out of that mouth because she wants to rule over men. That was one of her male congregants. She rules over him. All right, verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause, the Most High himself, the Most High himself shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they might be damned or condemned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Here it is, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10 and 11. That's what's going on. Now, we're going to where we were going to, Matthew 11. Stop listening to these devil women out here. A man is not supposed to listen to a woman in the, in the first place. There's no women leaders and no men. Where are you getting that crap from? That's a, that's a new speak. That's the new age. That's what that is. If you are, you're obeying these women out here, have a woman pastor, you are being deceived. We're going to Matthew 11 and 12. None of the apostles were women. You understand that? None of the apostles were women. You understand that? If you want to be a disciple, male or female, you must do what the Lord said to do. Not what you want to do. Stop just doing everything that man tells you to do. The white man tells the black woman she can be a pastor, she wants to be a pastor. The white man tells the black woman she can be in business, she's in business. The white man tells the black woman she can be over the black man, that is not going to happen. You are dismissed. Nobody's talking to you. Go away. Matthew 11. You see, May the Lord God judge her and punish her for her wickedness. She is deceived unto damnation. I have said, may the Most High curse her and discipline her for her disobedience in disturbing the word of God. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Hamashek, Yahweh, Shai. Now, we're going on to Matthew 11 and 12. What is the kingdom of heaven? What is the kingdom of heaven? It is not for everybody. The kingdom of heaven is not for everybody. The kingdom of heaven is for the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's what it's for. If you don't know, ladies, or if you're Christian there in that, bit, in that van right there, read Revelation chapter 21 and 10. The names on the gates are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. And the 12 apostles are the, are the foundation. That's what's in there. Not the Gentiles. No Gentiles entering heaven. The reason why black people, let's, let's break this down psychologically. The reason why black people think that everybody can be saved is because they want so badly to be saved. That's what's going on. The reason why black people feel like everybody needs to be included is because they want to be included. <laughs> when the kingdom of heaven is for them. <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous. The reason why I smile is because I know the truth. 
And just because you, you think differently, you don't believe, it does not change the truth of God. All right, now this is the kingdom of heaven. This is what Hamash Yahweh Shai said, red letter. Let's get to it, Matthew 11 and 12. This is red letter. And we're going to start from verse 7 to get the context. And this is talking about Yahweh Shai teaches about the kingdom. That's the, that's the title of the section. The, mo, the, the Yahweh Shai teaches about the kingdom. This is what the kingdom is. It's not all Gentiles. Gentiles ain't getting in. Understand that? They ain't getting in. Here we go. We're going to start at 10. Uh, let's start at 7. And as they departed, Yahweh Shai began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went out ye to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he, even myself, I am he, I am one of them. For this is he, of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born, see we're gonna let this we're gonna let this person pass. We're not gonna we're not gonna entertain this foolishness. Next week I want you to come back out here and tell me what punishment the Lord God put upon you, because he's going to punish you. He's gonna bring down your congregation, he's gonna bring down every member of your little church. That's what he's going to do. He's going to destroy it. Because it cannot exist with the truth. It is averse to the truth. Here we go. Now that the ignorant has gone, the unbelieving have gone, the, the stiff neck and rebellious have gone, the black woman is going to die. That type of behavior is going to get black women killed. You understand that? That type of behavior is going to get them killed because they will not repent. They will not do what the Lord God says to do. Now here we go. Let's, start, let's go ahead verse 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my servant before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. There ain't no women preachers. None have risen that are greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Here it is. No, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, here it is right here. Verse 12. For from the days of John the Baptist until now, speaking of the time of Christ, 2022 years ago, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. <laughs> from the day, verse 12, 11 and 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elijah. It says Elias, but it's Elijah, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is the Israelites being in rulership. It is not about Gentiles getting in. Like I have said numerous times before, when a Meshach Yahweh Shai comes back, he's not going to the UN, he's not going to NATO, and he's not negotiating for his kingdom. That's not going to happen. And I'm going to say that at the camera. When Yahweh Shai Meshach returns, he's not going to negotiate with the United Nations, he's not going to negotiate with the North American Treaty Organization. He's not going to negotiate with the New World Order. He's not going to negotiate with the World Economic Forum. He's not going to negotiate with the World Bank. That's not what he's going to do. What he's going to do, even preceding his coming, is destroy all of those entities, all of those organizations, and the people that run them. Those that are spared are going to go into captivity. That is what is going to happen. All right? How do we know that? Revelation chapter 13. How do we know that all of those people that led the Israelites' captivity are going into captivity? See, y'all hate this. Even the black woman hates this because the black woman wants to be above the black man. Those days are over. You black men, you Latino, Hispanic men, Native American men, you have got to take your position. 
You understand that? Don't wait for some woman to allow you to, to take your position. You take it. The woman is not going to let you rule over her. You have to take it. Because that is godly. That is godliness. That is holiness. That's what it is. The man on top and the woman as a help meet. That is the way it works. Anything that's opposite of that is destruction, is disorder. That's what it is. Now what does it say in Revelation 13 verses 9 and 10? It says, if any man hath an ear and you have two, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must, must, must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. All right, we'll, we'll get another one. <laughs> we can do this all day. Revelation 22. Revelation 22. 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, for they, as you were, do it right, Israel. Revelation 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs, for without our dogs, for without our dogs, talking about the Gentiles and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Like that doctor, that fake doctor pastor. All right, she maketh a lie because there ain't no such thing as no female pastors. It don't exist. It exists in this world, but it don't exist in the biblical world. It don't exist the way the Lord God has ordered it. All right, understand that. Let's read that again. And then we're going to look at the names on the 12 gates. There ain't no Gentiles on the 12 gates. There's no Gentiles on the foundations. There's no European, let's be more specific. There's no Europeans, Asians, or Arabs on the 12 gates. There's no Europeans, Asians, or Arabs on the foundations of the kingdom of heaven. All right? We're going to read this again, and we're going to jump to uh, chapter 21 for those 12 gates. 22 and 14, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates in the city, into the city. Read that again. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. 15, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. If you claim it to be a female pastor, you're a liar. <laughs> All right? So she's going to be on the outside or in the lake of the burn of a fire, one or the other. Now, what is on these 12 gates? This is Revelation 21. Let's get straight to it. Let's get straight to it. Let's get straight to it. We're going to start at verse 12. The, king, the, the, the New Jerusalem that came out of heaven... Verse 12, had a great wall and high, and had 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels. Those are the guards of the 12 gates. And names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. There ain't no Gentile names on the gates. Christianity tells you there's one gate, well, there's 12 gates. There's another lie dispelled by, by Israelites against Christian pastors, Catholic priests, and Muslim imams. Let's, let's continue on here. 13. And on the east there was three gates, and on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. No Gentiles. No Gentiles. No Gentiles. Understand that. You may not like it because you want to love everybody, but you need to understand the truth of the Word of God. And once you understand the truth of the Word of God, you will like it. That is how this thing works. You understand? It's about you being obedient. God's not going to be obedient to you. Hamashiach Yahushua is not going to be obedient to you. You have to be obedient to them. 
If you're not obedient to them, you're not going to come to any understanding. You're going to believe everything in Christianity. You're going to believe everything in Catholicism. You're going to believe everything in, in uh, Islam and all the other world religions, which are all fake. All of them are false. The Lord God did not establish any religion. The Messiah did not establish any religion. Man created religion. All of your religions, if you look it up, if you, if you want to be halfway smart, all of your religions, if you look it up, were created by the Gentiles. The majority of them this, on this side of the world by the Europeans. Look it up. The, I'll say it again. The majority of world religions were created by the Europeans. Look it up. You got a smartphone, use it. You got a mini computer in your hand, use it. Look at, look at the origins, who created whatever the religion you're in. And you're going to find out. Matter of fact, I'm going to give a little synopsis right now.